Hey everybody, welcome to Retro Gamer Revival, Facebook's number one retro gaming community um, live video cast. Um, hope you all enjoyed our new introduction. I feel like I was on an episode of the chart show on ITV in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, right, so who have we got with us this week? We've, we have um, Nintendo Ollie. Evening. OB Dorbs. Greetings. Blunners. Hello. Neil, less than 1%. Good evening, all. And try, um, our guest this evening, Tim from Triangle Face YouTube channel. Hello. Cool. So, Best on call, has okay. everyone been this week? Yeah, not bad. Yeah, really, bad. yeah really good. Busy week. <laughs> Anyone managed to get to the pub now they've reopened? No. No. I think that's just yeah, you, mate. What, I didn't twice? Basically... Um, but I did go take my children to Portland's Park on Monday, so that was great. That's Portland. Very good. So bit more, um, <laughs> bit more um, sensible than going to the pub twice. But I did manage to get my hair cut, so um, I'm quite happy with that. Um, <laughs> I'll another week for that. I've got another week of lockdown hair before that's all. Uh, that all changes. Yeah. Well, um, well things are getting better. <laughs> well, well, Neil, you made a trip out today as well. Yeah, yeah, went to uh, Super Game Shack in Leicester. Good stuff there. Consoles out, piece of play. Um, all kinds of consoles and games to buy. Posters, plushies, uh, badges, everything. It's just it's just a retro man cave. You just just got to go. Cool. Right cool. Sounds good. Glowing um, yeah, recommendation there. Cool. So... Um, as I say, we're joined by um, Tim from Triangle Face um, oh. Gaming this evening. Um, I'll put your YouTube channel up on the screen there, um, Tim. So tell us a bit about um, what we can expect to find on your YouTube channel. Yeah, so, um, it's just a bit of fun. I've just done a few videos quite a few years ago now, to be fair. Uh, there's not a lot of new content on there, but feel free to go back and check the, uh, the archives. Um, I did a few sort of review videos of just games I wanted to talk about. Um, I got some like um, kit to capture footage off of consoles. I just play around with that, so I show game footage. Uh, this is before like Twitch started getting really big, so I had to like, get all the footage on my computer and edit it around to play around with it. Uh, and then I did some playthrough videos. So I did a few series of Let's Plays. Uh, so I got playing through things like uh, Golden Axe and Streets of Rage. Uh, and then me and my friend Chris did uh, a really long uh, Final Fantasy VII series. So we did all the Final Fantasy VII story. And then because we had all the footage, we then also did like a Limit Break Guide, Enemy Skill Guide, uh, Chocobo Breeding Guide, and then like a boss battle playthrough thing. Um, I think that's probably the last thing we did because I think we were a bit burnt out by how much, that, how long that took to make uh, and haven't really done anything for a while. But who knows, maybe I'll do, do some more at some point. But uh, yeah, that's the kind of stuff we've got on the page. Um, and uh, yeah, just some playthroughs. I don't think there's really much else on there. I had a few other videos where we went to things like um, Eurogamer and uh, Com Comic Con type stuff. Uh, they didn't really come out very well, to be honest. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's so difficult it's, to film anything yeah. there, isn't it? Because it's so loud. Yeah. I had like a microphone that was uh, someone lent me um, that would capture sound really well. I had a really good interview with a couple of people playing games. And then I realized later that I hadn't got it on the right setting. I didn't record any of it. Like, oh, oh, bugger. <laughs> best, probably the best bit <laughs> out of the whole day. And I couldn't actually use it. Uh, it was a bit annoying. So, cool. yeah, um, some of it's probably a bit uh, cringe watching myself do something from like 10 years ago. Yeah, it's just <laughs> no, no, it's good. I've, I've been following your channel for a number of years, um, but obviously I've known you for a number of years, um, and, and I know you're big into retro games. So um, yeah. something that I, I do want to start asking guests um, as we get them on is favourite console and favourite game? Oh, very tough. Um, I'd say probably my favourite console um, would probably be the PlayStation 2. Um, I think that was graphically a really big jump. Um, but yeah, just going from... like jump to ps1 was really um, big but then the ps2 just when i look back at some of my favorite games a lot of them are on ps2 um, it was a really solid console spent a lot of time on that um favorite game um probably gonna have to be final fantasy 7 um played played through that more times than i probably needed to um yeah did the, again did the playthrough videos on it and then introduced other people to it and um, to play along um yeah that's just one of my one of my favorite. i'm actually playing it now on the uh, the rg 351p um, because we've got the save states and stuff, I'll start playing it again just because it's a, a game I know so well. I can just 
really casually play it and not, not really think about it too much. Um, and one really good thing about that, the fast forward feature is grinding and trying to level up, set it up so you can just fast forward and then just keep hitting attack and you'll level up really quick. You just, <laughs> uh, state cool. is a bit of a good, good trick to do as well. So if you want to see the different uh, conversation options, just save it, go one way and then go back and reload it and see what they say. If you say the other thing, which you can do on the original. Yeah. So a few cheeky things like that and made it a bit fun. P- PS2 is an absolute monster, don't know. Some of the games that came out on that con- this console was unbelievable when you do look yeah. back on it. Yeah. It was the cutscenes for PlayStation that always like blew my mind. I remember seeing the cutscenes on the original PS1 and thinking, oh my god, I cannot wait till games look like this. And then the cutscenes on the PS2, I think the, the first the first one I saw that really just literally took my breath away was the first cutscene of Final Fantasy X when they play um, Blitzball. And it was just this, yeah, oh my yeah, god, that was it, that was it. You just sat there like, I, I cannot see how games are going to get any better than this. And, mm-hmm. you know, what, what did we know? But, <laughs> yeah, what a system. For me, yeah, I think it was Grand, Grand Theft Auto 3, seeing that for the first time. Yeah, just, yeah. Like, you know, how could anything mm-hmm. get better than that? Did it? Smackdown yeah. games on there? Yep, yeah, Smackdown. Oh, Probably brilliant. Hours, hours into those. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Actually, ages doing the SmackDown games. I think the creator wrestlers and stuff as well to make those games, um, you know, give it a lot of really long lifespan. If you there's so much customization you could do, and you'd end up playing them for ages. Um, that and I was just going to say the uh, Time Splitters games as well on the PS2. Uh, some yes. of um, I'd really like to see actually a, if they did an HD update of like the Time Splitters trilogy, just put one, two, and three on a modern console, put it online. I think that's definitely something I'd get behind. There's well, one video of yours that. Happening. No, oh, really? Oh, that'd be good. Oh, yeah, no. it, it seems to be, it, it always seems to be the thing that they always come out of, like, oh, there's going to be a Time Splitters remaster or a Time Splitters remake, and it just, it never happens. But there's always someone on the sort of cusp of people's conversations going, it might happen. I think it's all this content they had back on, like, say, 2. You could make your own maps and you could actually play online. But back then, I don't think a lot of people really played online with the PlayStation 2, even though it did have no. that. It, yeah, it's it, 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 expansion 1 that came out. Yeah. It didn't come with um, it yet, the expansion, but it's a bit, yeah. bit behind. Um, but yeah, once you, if you can do that online on a modern day console, um, that would be great because you can do loads of customization and make your own challenges. Like the challenge mode, we just go through getting all the different uh, unlocks. It really good. It's made a really fun game. Cool. Well, um, thank you for being with us this evening, Tim. Um, I'm sure Thanks we're going to. That's okay. Um, I'm sure there's going to be lots. Um, throughout the evening we've got some questions come in as well um so just before we move to the next topic this is from nwo for life bit of an odd <laughs> question but, um <laughs> if you'd ask you to eat a particular meal that your favorite retro character eats what would it be just probably i don't think he ever ate it in a video game but it was definitely in the cartoon which is around about the time that some of the games became popular i'm just going to go with the sonic the hedgehog chili dog I, I was going to go for that. I think it's something else now. <laughs> I'm going to go, Mamma Mia, I want the spaghetti and meatballs from Mario. <laughs> from the, you remember the cartoon? Yeah. Be on Channel yeah. 3 in the morning. Super yeah. Mario Brothers Super Show. Yeah. It's all on Netflix. Really? It's on Netflix at the moment. Yeah, it's it's I, I really, really do it Neil here. How about <laughs> um, Chicken Leg from Streets of Rage? The chicken Leg or Ham or whatever it is. <laughs> that was just quite tasty. All, ro- all roast chicken. It was on the, on the floor. <laughs> Yeah, Ooh, I, can oh, a, yeah it was, wasn't it? I can I can do a kneel and pull it. Here's one I made earlier. Yes, <laughs> amazing. Oh wow, look at that. Complete series from Shout Factory. Phenomenal. Wow. Oh, Tim, you've got a fan here, Kelly Gale. Hello everyone. Thank you for having Tim on. Made my evening and um <laughs> happy to have Tim on. Um is and it, we'll hear it? more from Tim over the course <laughs> of the evening. It worked perfect in rehearsals, by the way. collaboration <laughs> <laughs> that we run here. It was, it was. We're trying new things this evening, and there's more things for me to do. So I apologise now if um, things don't run according <laughs> to plan. Um, anyway, so what we thought we would talk about tonight is um, '90s video game TV shows. Um, I'm sure we've all got great memories of '90s game TV shows. Um, I know I have. Um, and I, I guess the obvious one to start with is Games Master. 
Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll put it out um, to you guys. Um, you know, what were your memories of Games Master? Just All of it. Yeah. <laughs> One of my favorite Games Master moments <laughs> uh, was uh, there's a kid that went on to Games Master and asked for a, uh, to help with some game. I don't remember what the game was. But he gave, gives out the code, carries on with the show. The next week, the same kid comes back on. So, oh, Games Master, I did the code you gave me and actually made the game much harder and like added loads like, <laughs> extra in it. And Games Master's like, Amazing. that serves you right for trying to cheat. It's like, it's a game you're going to give out. <laughs> He's like, oh, well, actually, I'll give, you the, I'll give you the right code now. And gave him another one. Oh. I thought it was really funny. They just stitched up this kid by uh, giving him a code that made it harder instead of easier. And then oh, just yeah. laughed. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think my my favorite favorite memory of Games Master, and I, I it's on it's on YouTube on its own one. You don't have to go and search for the episode. Whenever I'm feeling a little bit low in life, I Google search Games Master Mario sixty four Dave Perry, and Dave Perry at the time um, was considered like a, a bit of a a bit of a sex icon in gaming. He was like this really slick kind of cool guy, wore a bandana on his head. He was really good at beat 'em ups. And they had a Mario 64 challenge before the game was out over here, but the, the, it was out on, out in Japan. And they were doing the um, uh, Cool Cool Mountain in, um, race. We got to race the penguin down the, the yeah, ice slide. Yeah. Oh, mate. And you had to get to the bottom the quickest, or if you fell off, that's when your time stopped. And uh, I can't remember who Dave Perry was racing, but he, he didn't last very long. He just slipped straight off the track and was like, ah, oh, well, I've ruined it, haven't I? And then Dave Perry tried to do this infamous like cheat where you can like just hop over the edge land like two floors down and you're almost at the end so you cut out like the whole the whole map mm. and he balls it up something chronic to the point where they were like so what happened there then and then he just like just doubled down just didn't even acknowledge oh, i was trying to do this thing he just, just was like no i've been stitched up here and they're like <laughs> what do you mean you've been? What do you mean you've been stitched out? He's like, well, we're choosing to play a game on a system that, that I don't have that the other the other contestant has. And he's like, well, oh, yeah, but you, you 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 can get the game. He's like, oh, it's not out yet. He's like, yeah, but we're journalists. We can get it on import. And they just kept poking him with this stick <laughs> to just get him to this point where he was seething. And I think Dominic Diamond even says, so what you're saying here is we're not seeing sour grapes. And he's like, nope, just a man that's been stitched up. And they're like, right, well, <laughs> that's the end of that then. And I always remember reading online afterwards, and one of my mates told me that there's a, a rumor that supposedly after the show, because the uh, I think the whole production team was it was a bit of a lads show, they just cancelled his ca- ta- cancelled his taxi home and all buggered off and just left him at that um, the venue that they had, which was like in the middle of nowhere before mobile phones and anything. You had to walk like miles to get to a payphone to call a taxi. <laughs> I, I guess <laughs> one memory I I always have. Um, I'm sure Haxel Jim Duggan from WWF was on an episode. Um, competing against someone in the audience, so I may have just made that up, and you're looking at me blankly. But I'm, I'm sure that <laughs> I happened. remember that. I'm, I'm sure Haxel. Someone Google it. Um, <laughs> it and, and let me know if Haxel Jim Duggan was on Games Master. I've either dreamt it or um, or it, it did happen. Um, a, another a games program, and I'm going to pass this over to um, OEB Dorbs for this. Um, was Games World that was on Sky. Um, I can probably guess what your favourite memory of, of Games World was. <laughs> um, I, I love the adverts. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I've got, I've got a few memories of Games Games World. I just met, I remember Bob Mills hosted it. Um, I think he did it for quite a few years. I remember a couple of characters, Big Boy Barry. He's quite a good one. Yeah, Big Boy also, Barry. So um, the Games Mistress, very very good. She was amazing at video games. <laughs> um, I tried to find some episodes earlier today, but I just didn't have time. So I was hoping to watch a few of them, but I didn't, sadly. Um, but yeah, I, I just remember they just invited some kids on, and they used to get battered by the the games masters. <laughs> so that's all. That's my memories of it. So yeah, great show. Okay, well, um, I'm pleased to say Haxel Jim Duggan was on Games Master because I've just found it on, <laughs> on YouTube. Um, but yeah, Games Games World on Sky One um, presented by Bob Mills. Is yeah, it Bob, it was, Mills? yeah Bob Mills. Yeah, yeah um, and on the Monday you would have contestants competing against each other, and then the winner of that would go on to Friday's show um, and compete against. I think they were called like video eaters or something like that. They were like yeah. gladiators, yeah. but they were. And you, you had people like Big Boy Barry. Yeah, everyone heard of Big Boy Barry. I think he had his yeah. own TV show on ITV off the back of it. Um, 
but yeah games world was a a really cool program and another program i can think of is um, bad influence that was on in the 90s with violet berlin what channel Anyone was that on i vaguely remember the name is it on like a sky channel like sci-fi channel something like that, i think it was yeah Bravo, one of those ones i think Bra- yeah Bra- no, I, I, I think. it was on itv bad influence it was, i vaguely uh, vaguely remember that not to any point where I could probably say I've got like memories of it, but I do I do vaguely remember there being some other some other games TV shows. I didn't have like Sky or cable um, until I was in college, um, so yeah, the only one I ever really like have a good memory of is Games Master. But but yeah, I seem to remember Bad Influence, yeah. but not not vividly. You, you said uh, Bad Influence with Violet Berlin, but obviously the main presenter was Andy Crane <laughs> on um, BBC. Andy Crane. Well. Let me Google that name and see if that rings any bells. Cheers, Pete Morgan. It was very smooth. Uh-huh. Not so much oh. a game. Do you remember they used to do on like, uh, on like the old things like live and kicking and DJ cat show and things like that? You'd have like a show that presented a program and then in between they'd have competitions. And they used to have like the dialing ones where people play, get, play a game over their phone. And it was yeah. even they had massive input lag from using their handset to try and play a game. Or they'd be like just shouting the commands and there must have been someone there just pressing the buttons for them. They're trying to play a game, going up, down, oh, jump. Yes. And everyone yes. was terrible because like there was <laughs> so much lag. Nobody could do it. I think it was like Hugo the Troll. It was like a big yes. one of a few different programs. So I always yeah. thought, oh, that'd be really good fun to play it. But then watching it, like good idea, but terrible execution. Do you know, I've, I've not thought about that probably... I don't know, probably for about 20, 25 years, Pete. That, mm-hmm. has, that has absolutely like, just sparked a memory <laughs> from the depths of my imagination. That is, wow, that is something. I, f- I do remember Hugo the Troll. Wow. It's, it's maybe games not... are available to buy now just like to play the games because I don't know where, you know, if they're ever on consoles or anything, if it was just you could only play it on those TV shows. Yeah. I do have a show. That I, strictly speaking, I, I could get in trouble here because it's not an actual video game show, but it definitely employed, employed a lot of video graphics. And that was Nightmare. Can I get away with that? Yeah. It's a bit more like Dungeons and Dragons, really, wasn't it? Like a live action yeah. Dungeons and Dragons, but yeah, it was cool. very much like it had all the computer generated scenery around you. And I, I just remember that show being the, the nuts. I loved that show as well. It was amazing. Yeah. Amazing game show. Didn't you go and see it live, Ryan? They didn't, they do like nightmare live. I did. I went to see it at um, Winchester theater Royal about five, six years ago. And they'd done a live version of nightmare and they got someone from the right. audience up and they like built the sets around him. But that's pretty awesome. I got to wear the nightmare helmet at the um, end of the show, wow. I have my picture with the new Dungeon Master, which was quite cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think they're still doing that. Well, obviously not at the moment. It was a bit of a revival, wasn't it, at one point? I think they did. Too. Yeah, but um, Nightmare on Challenge TV, I, I would still watch today. And I, I still find it funny when the kids just walk off the edge of the, uh, <laughs> off the, edge <laughs> of the platform yeah. or something. Well, one thing I found out later after watching it is I always thought that the room with the buzz saws were just way too hard. I never saw anyone get past it. Because like, Do you know those buzz saws that go down a corridor? And yeah, like, you need to take... step. Apparently, they only put people in that room if they wanted to get rid of them. If they're like, oh, this team's no good. They're not going to get very far. <laughs> it produced much like, put them in the buzz saw room. And then they just chuck them in that room, kill them off, and get the next team in. Apparently, that was on purpose. <laughs> oh, that someone's uh, someone's chucked up a uh, another TV show in the chat that was based around sort of like video games and stuff, and that was reboot. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Reboot. That was the first computer generated one. It was. Yeah. If you go if you go back and watch it now, it has dated horribly, absolutely <laughs> horribly. But I do remember at the time thinking, "Wow." This yeah. is going to change TV, and it, it's. I guess it sort of did, but maybe not in the way that they thought it would. But yeah, that was. <laughs> that's a, again, that's another show I've not thought of for a very long time. Yeah, reboot. Yeah, yeah cool. <laughs> Wasn't it well, like the mainframe okay, or the okay, Matrix? Okay. Or yeah, no. Um, I'm sure there's some other shows. Um, we'll try and see if anyone puts them in the chat over the course of the evening and reminds us of them. Um, yeah. But just to get everyone watching prepared, it's um, almost time for the favourite um, <laughs> part of the weekly show. Um, <laughs> regular viewers will know um, what it is. Um, but before then, I'm just going to um, just 
cut to a <laughs> quick break. Hey, well, welcome back. And um, now it's time for the favourite part um, of the show. Um, I think he's getting a bit of a cult following. His head's getting bigger and bigger every week. And it's time <laughs> for um, what's in OEB Dorb's box. What's in the box? box? <laughs> so, um, let me just get it. What's heavy one this week? So there's the box. Oh, heavy box. Okay. So if we get, you know, bigger budget, I might... Sort of branch out of it, make it a bit better. Um, <laughs> in it, but never mind. You explain the rules to us. Yeah, so basically, you get uh, 20, 20 questions, yes, no, um, is all I can answer. And it's a item that is loosely retro related. So it could be a console, could be a game, could be a uh, an attachment, a controller. Memorabilia. Could be memorabilia. I've not used that yet. That's quite a good one, actually. I can certainly think of something I can put in there. Um, so, yeah, if you're ready, I'm ready when you are. Hey, well, Got Tim, as you're the guest. Um, pen and notepad. Yeah, okay, so is it a peripheral? That's a very good question, uh, and that's a no. Oh, he's throwing us off the scent with that, saying it could be a peripheral. Well, Neil, do you want to go quite, next? Yeah, you, you said it was quite heavy, so is it console? Again, that's another very good question, but that is no. Runners? Um, <laughs> is, it in the, is it from the 90s? Um, just looking on Wikipedia. I don't think so. I don't think it is. I'm going to say no. Is it a game? It is a game. So it's a is game it heavy? A is it <laughs> is the game within the system? You mean built in? Yes. No. Oh, I, I thought that was going to be it, mate. I genuinely thought I was like, oh, that's it. That's a good question. No, it's, not the it's not in the 90s. Tim? Is, is, it, a, is it a cartridge-based yeah. game? Uh, no. Is it a PC game? Or a, a computer game rather than a console game? If you're not... The version I have. Or the one that's in your box? Uh, no, it's not PC. Is it a floppy disk game? No. It's not cartridge, it's not. Is it a board game? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting off that. that was a quite a good question, actually. Yeah, because so it. <laughs> yeah. it's not Doors. cartridge, isn't it? No. Yeah. It was like Pac Man the board game or something. <laughs> <laughs> is it a card game like the Mass System or Core Graphics, that type of game? Card game? Yeah. You know, like the Mass yeah. System card games or. No. no. Okay. How, many, how many questions are we on? Uh, that's 10, so you're halfway through. I must say I'm very disappointed with your um, your progress so far. Very disappointed. Yeah. Disappointed in myself, to be honest. All we've got <laughs> is it's a game. Yeah. It's a game. Is it? <laughs> I mean, it could be anything. Anything. You established oh, yeah. that it's not an all-in-one thing, right? That was one of the questions, wasn't it? So it's not yeah. Yeah, 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 that was it's built in. Yes, yeah. so it's not built in. It's not all-in-one. It's not from the nineties. A cartridge or a floppy disk. Is it a PlayStation game? Uh, can you be more specific? <laughs> a PlayStation 2 game? Uh, 
It is a PlayStation 2 game. Oh, there you go. Okay, so we'll leave there it. we go. Right. So I'll only count that with one, one question. How many guesses have we got left? Nine. Nine. Okay, I do have a question, and it might just be: Is it whether it's a, just a clever name or not? Is heavy? Is it heavy? As in, it's heavy to hold, or is heavy part of the? Well, actually, just that. Is it? Is it heavy to hold? Um, like when you pick up the box, or are you just kind of mimicking that it's heavy in the sense that it's uh, heavy's part of the title of the franchise? Uh, I would say no to all of them. Right. Is it a beam up game? Is it a fighting game? Uh, I certainly hope not. No. No. <laughs> Bit of a clue there as well, though. Is it a game we're likely to have played? Um, <laughs> I would <laughs> hope so. Um, Just looking at my PS2 say... collection. I don't know. Knowing some of the panel here, they probably have. Um, <laughs> probably, What's I'll say mean? for yourself, Tim. I'll I'll be surprised if you played it. So uh, I'll, I'll it say a, no is, to that. Is it a football game? No. Right, well, you got five left. <sighs> We've narrowed it down to the sister. I mean, that's a good start. Is it like pop pop stars on PlayStation Two? Is it like it? No. Is it pop stars on PlayStation Two? Is it? 2? No. Uh, no. No. Pardon me. Is it Guitar Hero? So, you know Ollie, that's a good guess, but no, it's not. Ah, oh, we were there. That was a very good guess. What did the PS2? The PS2 had eye toy, didn't that? That was a something. Yeah. But he said it's heavy. Did it have that spell book game? Mm-hmm. Was it like a spell book? I didn't, didn't say it was heavy. Oh, is it eye toy then? Yes. No. Oh, well, you got you got two left. Oh, I mean, we're just guessing titles now, aren't we? Yeah, um, yeah got Is is it a sports game? <laughs> uh, no. Well, right, you got one left. Guys, oh, I'm very disappointed. Right. Very disappointed. I'm going to okay. go with. Yeah. I'm, I'm going was... to go with your. You you playing a trick on us and going for your, um, profile picture. Is it? Oh yeah, Max Payne. Is it Max Payne? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Unlucky fellas, it was a very. Well, I would we say. Got heavy rain. Oh, it's heavy rain it. on. It's heavy rain on any. PS3. Oh. Sorry. No, I was just saying heavy rain. I know you like that one, but it's on it's PS3. Lost it? We've lost right. again. Let me just open it up. Oh. Oh. It is Britney's dance beat. Oh, oh <laughs> I would never have guessed <laughs> that <laughs> if I had a million Look guesses. It. I think we're on the face. Wow. No, Look at those graphics. That I mean, that's that's quite that amazing. <laughs> that's quite a game. That is quite Ooh. a game. Britney's dance. Look at that, complete and everything. Yeah. Well, any... How does that work on Why? PlayStation Two? Because there's no. Know, is it, there's an iToy one. Is it? <laughs> I've never played it. I only bought it the other day. So, like, how do you do a dance game with a control bar? It did have, uh, you, didn't they? You, you could get yeah, some of them did have the flats, the mats. Yeah, well, yeah. Cool. You just press press X and circle. So it might be like a rhythm, circle. like a rhythm type game. I forgot about the dance mat. That's always, uh, well, it's got some uh, classic songs. Baby, one more time. I'm a slave for you. <laughs> and you can unlock exclusive exclusive Britney concert videos. So that's pretty good. It's just what every Britney fan needs, isn't it? I think. And it's uh, no chance of getting that. Featuring Britney Spears realistically transformed into 3D. So, <laughs> okay. uh, I'll put a picture of that up later. So, unlucky fellas. I think really we'll well. I think it, it needs to be 30 questions, not 20. <laughs> if it's going to be a game like that, we're going to need an extra, an extra, possibly an extra segment. If I'm honest, I don't, I, I don't think I'd have point. guessed that. I thought you did it quite early because we've been chatting about like cheesy dance things, haven't we? Well, I think we all need to get together um, before next week and um, we'll get some questions together and um, see what we come <laughs> up with. Yeah. Well, yeah. thanks, OB Dorbs. Um, yeah. Always an interesting segment of the show. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, um, a topic that I guess during lockdown um, is something that has become quite um, a popular sort of collection of retro games and systems. Um, I'm going to pass this over to you, Neil, because you've obviously been to a retro game shop today. Um, so do you want to let us know what kind of things you saw at the shop and what the prices were like um, for those things? Yeah, I, I saw the Mega Drive uh, 1 with the Mega CD he was selling. Shocked me the price of that. That was £180. Whoa. Um, yeah. Is that the Mega Drive 1? It was in really nice condition, but I don't know whether it was worth £180. Was the, was the Mega CD, was it like the original one, like the big flat one? With, it looked like a... The big square one that went on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, the the Mega CDs, it's been going up and up over the years. I remember when I mm. maybe about five or six years ago, I was looking at getting one, and it was about a hundred pound boxed, but it just it just keeps going up. I didn't know whether, I didn't know whether this one was boxed because you just had it in the display case. Maybe it, maybe the price was up because you had the box in the back somewhere. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. yeah. What about, what about the game you were telling us about that was quite interesting before we came on air tonight? The Mega Drive game. The Mega Drive game that you saw today. Sealed. Oh, Dem- yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was um, Demolition Man on the Mega Drive. That's and it was, it, from what I could see in the cabinet, it was in, well, basically, I don't think it'd been opened. It'd been sealed from factory still. Uh, I was shocked at the price. It was £150. I don't know whether any Mega Drive game can can ask that much. There's there are a few. There's a there's a couple of games on. I'll have to have a look and, and see if I can remember them. But certainly on Mega Drive and Super Nintendo, there are some games that are very expensive. Um, I think the one that or two, three actually that come to mind on Super Nintendo is if you can get Earthbound in the big box with yeah, the yeah. Uh, with the guide in it, that that can fetch four, five, six, seven hundred pound. I think I've seen it go for sometimes. Um, big box Super Metroid as well. That's a couple of hundred pound. Um, yeah. The weird one that I do not understand why it's so expensive because the game is pretty pap is Sunset Riders on Super Nintendo. That is just crazy yeah. money. It's a it's a nothing game, really, but it's like four or five hundred quid. I used to love that game. I used to love that game. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. it's just that so there are there are some that have always been, I think, quite quite pricey, but certainly with lockdown, it's just even just guff, normal, everyday, run of the mill stuff that you can just get readily all the time is expensive like things like super mario world like how many versions or how many like copies of super mario world are there on ebay right now like it, it's going to be thousands and even that is is fetching a decent price unboxed just cart only it's like you know 15 to 20 pound when before it was like it was under a tenner it was always the box for that game that was a little bit more pricey um, yes yeah, but that yellow box, I was watching a yellow because my, my copy is, is unboxed because it came with my Super Nintendo. And I would just quite like to have the box on its own. Um, and the yellow version of the box for that sold for like £100 on eBay the other day, box only. You just The, the prices are going nuts at the moment. So yeah, I'm, I've got um, Zelda 1 and 2 on the NES and they're worth over 100 quid each, easy. Um, yeah. Recently, I I've been trying for, to get it for years because I've played all the other Paper Mario, and that was Thousand Year Door. Mm-hmm. Um, I picked that up. Oh, that has been slowly and slowly going up and up, and I managed to get it like a a sniping and got it for about fifty quid. It was at sixty, and that's without the actual game kit. I'm like, that's just the disc. Mm. So Ooh. to get it complete, I've got it's gonna it's about one hundred and fifty, I think, on there now. Yeah, so I've got all all the ones off like the N sixty four, like Banjo, um, Tui, Conker's Bad, Third A. I've got all them um, in the loft as well. But the mega expensive one on um, N sixty four is Snowboard Kids two. Like the the, the original Snowboard Kids, nah, you can still pick yeah. that up for like twenty five quid, thirty quid boxed. Snowboard Kids two boxed <clears throat> in like bad condition is is a couple of hundred pound. And again, I've never understood that either, because that again, that it's it's fine, but as a as a game game, when you compare it to some of the other games that are on 
N64, like Mario 64, F Zero X, you know, Ocarina of Time, some of like the highest rated games of all time. You compare that to like Snowboard Kids 2, and it's just like it's it's just completely pales in comparison. So it's got to be something to do with the print runs. Maybe there's just not very many of these games out there in the wild. Mm -hmm. There was one thing I was looking for. There was one thing I was looking for a few weeks ago. I mean, I've got Game Boy game, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance, and I was I wanted a, a way to play them on the TV. And I know that Hyperkin have brought out uh, their their new console that plays plays all the Game Boy uh, cartridges. I wanted the original way to play it. And I, the, the thing I found was for the GameCube, the Game Boy player, yeah, I thought, I've got that, that. Was great. I would love one of those. And the prices, they're like £100. And some of them don't even come with the CD that you need uh, to, to put in the GameCube to be able to run it. Mm. Not, uh, I've got that. Just to play Game Boy games on the TV. Same. I'd love Same. it, but I'm, I'm not sure I'm prepared to pay that amount of money at the moment. Not no. that it's ever going to come down. It's always going to go up. Yeah, some of it tends to have like a like a peak and a trough. Um, you know, coming on to, to what where I just popped up on the screen there that, that Hammond said about um, the Resident Evil games are going up in price. That's uh, yeah, they're all going up. The ones that have shocked me, like really shocked me, is Silent Hill. Like I know the first Silent Hill game on PS One, if you want it on Black Label, has always been twenty pound on a on a on a bad day, and you know sometimes you could get it for under a tenner on a good day. Um, but yeah, good luck picking up. Black Label Silent Hill 1 now for under £40. Um, if it's got the the demo disc with it as well for Metal Gear, then that's going to increase the price. Um, I don't know why in America, but specifically in America, Silent Hill 2 and 3 are becoming triple-figured games. And I do not understand that. I mean, that again, that, that's a game that you can pick up. There are thousands of copies of that on eBay. And yet, yeah, Silent Hill 2 and specifically 3 is... Like one hundred and fifty dollars, and I do not understand that. But both of those games are like thirty, forty pound now on eBay. It just even for the European versions, and I, I just don't know where it's coming from. Yeah, what and about again, what the collection with with yeah Silent Hill two, three, and four. Don't get it. What, do so what about what it. you picked up, Ollie, this week? Because you picked up a retro game this week, didn't you? I did. Where is it? I picked one up as well. Off on my shelf. This again. This game. Is, this game isn't oh, yeah, um, the game isn't good by any, well, it, it's not terrible. <laughs> Just I remember as a kid getting this game and being so disappointed because it was Nintendo's stab at making like an educational game. It's like we'll make it fun, and it just wasn't Super Mario World, and I was really gutted. Um, but I've had like a real hankering to play it lately, and I just never see it for what I think is a reasonable price. Um, but I managed to get. Uh, a PAL box copy of Mario is missing. Um, the box is in okay condition. It's got some dings and some scuffs on it. The manual is, it may as well not be there. It's pretty bad, uh, but it's there. But the cartridge is in immaculate condition. Um, Ollie, is this um, from eBay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I've been, I, so I have like a couple of particular games that I, that I know aren't, they sort of fluctuate in price and I just sort of watch them every now and then. Um, yeah, yeah. Mario is missing and Mario's Time Machine are two games that, they sort of they have like a peak where they get to about sixty quid and then they just drop off the face of the earth for twenty thirty quid and I managed to pick mine up for in the low thirties with shipping um, so I was happy to pay that but it's it's a game that I'm probably going to play a handful of times add it to the Mario collection rather than be like a hardcore game that I'm going to regularly play because it is pretty bad. <laughs> How about you, Tim? Have you purchased any retro um, games or consoles? Yeah, well, recently? I, I tend to. Um... Uh, play some stuff on emulators. I've got a couple of retro pies and things like that. I quite like uh, buying sort of modern, um, right, retro-inspired games. Um, so I quite like things like the new Streets of Rage 4. Uh, yes. Solid that came out. That was really good. I'm, at the moment, I'm playing um, the Mario 3D All-Stars and playing Mario Galaxy because uh, that, that's been really good to kind of play through again. Um, I love that I game. Old, it's old amazing. retro stuff in style. Um, but I think, you know, when places like CEX reopen, uh, definitely got a hungry to go back in there and just have a brow and just yeah. pick up random, random I did games. notice it was yeah. open today. Yeah. Was, was it open today, did you say? It was, yeah. yeah. I noticed yeah. it was open today. See, yeah. see yeah. this PS2 section is really good. It's all Most yeah. of it is 50p. I think the most I've ever seen something was like a couple of quid. Um, they, they occasionally do know their pricing, um, but PS2 stuff is generally like proper oh. bargain stuff in there. I was going to mention MCX, actually. I think with the, you know, price of games going up as you go and say with a lot of it's to do with the cases and box box art 
um, yeah. adds the price a lot. I think CEX are under fire because they were um, buying pe- discs off people for peanuts, and then they're actually printing their own cover and, and putting the mm-hmm. sleeves in the in the like the cheap plastic cases, uh, and then selling it for a much higher markup. Mm-hmm. Um, now they weren't they weren't necessarily doing anything illegal, and it was actually printed on the inside sleeve that it was a reprint. Obviously, if someone's a collector and they go and pay a premium price for something which they think is the original box, the original cover art, actually, yeah. that's not what they're getting. It's a CEX reprint. So, no, um, yeah. Interesting that you were mentioning there about um, like older retro-inspired games, but on new systems and stuff. Um, I don't know if anyone's played this one. This one is on, I think, on PlayStation stores, but I'm, I'm a physical whore, so I have to try and find the physical copy. Um, and that was Blazing Chrome. That was absolutely... Yeah nuts it's basically like super contra or super pro protector for us in in um in europe and it's just a yeah a run and gun with a killer soundtrack and that i i've really enjoyed quite a lot of um companies now that sort of tend to go through this thing where they make an older version styled gameplay game but it just it just runs like butter on all the new systems and stuff um, i think it's nice to play games like that that are shorter because a lot of games nowadays are so bloated there's so much content which is great, but they just go on and on for ages and kind of want to wrap it up and move on to something else. So I yeah. like to play like pretty big campaign games, something like, you know, an Assassin's Creed or a Skyrim kind of game, and then play like a retro game that you can complete in a couple of days yeah. uh, and then put it and move on to something else. So whenever something like that comes out, I always like to, you know, pick it up and play that for a bit and then move on to something else. Yeah. yeah. I've recently been playing Retro Mania Wrestling, um, which is inspired off WrestleFest. Um, which is like, a, I, I assume it's like a 16 bit wrestling game that's just come out on Xbox, PlayStation, Switch, and um, what's the PC one? I can never remember what that's called. Steam. Steam. Steam um, yeah, yeah if, you, if you're watching Retro Mania, um, I've just plugged your, <laughs> <laughs> your game. Um, yeah, it's, it's not bad. It's not a bad game. Um, Playability is a bit limited. It's certainly not like WWF SmackDown from years ago or anything like that. But um, yeah, it's not a bad game. If if people are looking for a, a newly inspired retro game, then um, I'd recommend that. Um, and I think it's priced about fifteen twenty pounds, so it's not too nice. bad either. I've got um, I've got a, a bit of a prediction. I don't know if it's really classed as retro yet. The PS3 and 360 era because it's still relatively fresh. Um, but I think the PS3 is going to start becoming a very, very collectible system for um, now that they're shutting the PS3 store and the yeah, yeah. PlayStation Vita stores. All of those games, um, you might be able to download them like, on the the newer uh, PS store and whatnot. But there will be certain games that I think are going to start becoming quite pricey, um, and especially where collectors generally want the physical copies of things as well. Um, yeah, there's a little part of me that thinks the PlayStation 3 is going to be one to keep an eye on now. I've certainly started picking up some of the games that I never got around to playing at the time um, while they're, you know, basically being given away for free almost. But I could be very wrong. But I think yeah, that's... Mind people could have a PS Vita or a PS3 that's got a whole bunch of stuff already downloaded on it and then sell it as a, uh, you know, as a selling point. Say so these are the games already installed. Yeah, people did it with the PS4, didn't they? When um, when the PT trailer went live and everybody went nuts for that, yeah. I was one of those people. Amazing, amazing concept to just drop a trailer and then have it reveal what it was for at the end. Um, and then when Konami and Kojima fell out, they like took it off the PS Store, and that was it. People were selling PlayStation 4s on eBay for like 600 yeah. quid just because it had amazing, PT yeah. on it. But yeah. I just never got rid of it because it's such a great demo. But yeah, I, I, it's bizarre. I'm, I'm wondering whether or not we'll see the prices for like proper retro stuff not decline but come back to a more sensible level now people can kind of go out and spend disposable income on the things that they like to do like going to the pub and going to the cinema and going out for dinner um, I know some bloke might be selling loads of NES games if you're interested Um, he's recently stopped collecting them so he's got hundreds of sale he's in Canada so the shipping might be a bit expensive but um, if you're interested in bit... some of his games, <laughs> yeah. um, let, let me know. So, um, I picked up this week. Like Del Boy. I picked <laughs> up this week for um, the Famicom, the Amazing. original Mario. As I was saying, the Neil was saying how small these Famicom carts are compared to ours. Like, so no, cool, um, I picked up. It was it was eight quid. 
and it's probably about the hundred millionth time I've bought Mario one, but I'm quite happy with that. I know Neil, you picked up some stuff today, didn't you? Yeah, I picked up this today. Uh, I'm not, I was not really into football games, but when I saw the price, I, you know, a pound. Ether, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, I mean, it's worth it for a punt for a pound, isn't it? Even uh, if you play yeah, it for an hour. It didn't matter what game it was. It was a pound <laughs> I was going to buy. You. Decent. That's yeah, good. Well, it's something as a um, channel we'll keep an eye on moving forward, and I'm, I'm sure we'll discuss <laughs> it um, again on, on future episodes. <laughs> Okay, so um, I thought it'd be nice to chat about 90s handhelds tonight. So Game Gear, um, Game Boy and Atari Lynx. I personally had a Game Boy. Um, had some quite cool games on it. Um, Double Dragon 3. Um, Ollie's just holding one. Blunner's just holding one up there. <laughs> Double Dragon 3. Ghostbusters 2, which I think I gave away, which is now cool. Yeah, I think it's worth about £100 on eBay now. Um, Mad. Yeah, uh, at WWF Superstars 2, which was quite cool. I think it's the only wrestling game that ever had the Mountie on it, so that was quite cool. Um, <laughs> Sid Vicious. Um, so, yeah, um, Steel Cage Challenge, that was um, that was a really good game. Um, but, um, Neil, you held up a Game Boy there, so um, I'll hand over to you. Do, do you want to just tell us about this Game Boy? Because um, I know it's you've, yeah. you've had uh, it... Um, the, the guy who runs that uh, Super Game Shack that I went to today, uh, he's got a website called um, Game Boy Shack, I think it was called. This is what I had this off originally a few months back. He he puts new screens in, new speakers. <clears throat> the shell is fixed. But basically, the whole lot's new, apart from the main board inside. Uh, just show you. Oh, it's that screen. screen. Yeah. yeah, it's bright, nice and bright. Yeah. Backlit. Fantastic. I yeah. was, was always jealous of the Game Gear, say people that had Sega Game Gear, when the fact that was backlit. Nice. Yeah, change of the colours. Yeah. Yes. I never, so, I, I, I mean, I never had uh, the Game Boy when I was a kid. Um, the first, first one I had was the Game Boy Pocket. And I remember I had it for about 12 months and then sold it. I think, Why I think, I I think I'm Game Boy Pocket. Here's one I had earlier. <laughs> yeah, I've got the uh, saying I've got the uh, the colour and the pocket. Actually. Pocket screen is actually quite nice. The pocket screen is very nice. It's there's it's not decent. there's not there's not much in it really between that and the colour at all. Mm. But yeah, I had the yeah. uh, Game Boy and the Game Boy Colour. Uh, well, so what games I did you have? got given? Um, but I think best best games for me I had Zelda Ocarina of Time. Um, no, sorry, oh, yes. uh, um, Link's Awakening. Sorry, Link's Awakening. Awakening was a brilliant yeah. game. Brilliant uh, game. A, a Christmas present for my nan one year, which was, which was really good. Uh, and then um, Pokemon Red. Um, I think Pokemon came out when I was probably about 13. And I can remember I had the transfer cable. So I had Pokemon Red, a friend of mine had Pokemon Blue. So we had the transfer cable. And we come into school on, the, on our break and like have a Pokemon battle. Uh, and then we'd only just start the games. So we'd start the battle. Uh, and then over the weekend, I'd be like, right, I need to level up all my Pokemon. I'll go catch something cool. And then we come back on the Monday, and like we don't know how much the other person had played it or what Pokemon they got. So then those battles are quite exciting. Change Pokemon, throw something out. What has it got? What level is it? And then evidently one of us would play a heck of a lot more than the other and just thrash the other person. So then you'd have to go away and play it loads to, to catch up. So that was just the best um, you know, Pokemon trainer experience. You know? <laughs> Playing it, you got someone else playing the game in tandem with you, and you meet up every now and then to do a battle. And that was our first run through; it first came out. So, you know, as a thirteen-year-old yeah. Pokemon fan at the time, it was a uh, yeah, great, great use of a transfer cable. It felt like because <laughs> I remember when using it. Because I remember, didn't they bring Mew out as like a um, an update? You actually had to take your your Game Boy. To, I think we ours was Fleming Park, which is a local sports centre, but yeah, you to take it to there and they actually downloaded Mew onto your cart. But um, I think my car on the back of it is actually lost. Like the top of the stick is all faded, where it's just mm. constantly been in out, in and out. Of my <laughs> my Game Boy. So I, at the time, I actually did uh, my work experience at a Nintendo outlet that was in a local area, 
um, which I was really lucky to do. I think I don't know how many people must have put that down as their choice. Uh, but I managed to work for Nintendo for my work experience. And obviously, during work experience, you do get AD, but they just give you a lot of places to give you stuff. And on my last day working there, I just bought loads of Nintendo stuff. But like, uh, oh, amazing. I got, that's where I got my Game Boy Color. Uh, and they just had like, loads of stuff in the warehouse. I just got like, a whole bunch of NES games and like a Nintendo merchandise. And stuff. So that's oh, cool. As an adult, my brain yeah. has just been fried. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that was when they had the Nintendo hotline. So one of the days I got to sit with the people at the Nintendo hotline. Uh, oh. I thought it was going to be really interesting. I was like, oh, this could be great. And literally, they're all just sat there playing like pokemon stadium or like uh, perfect dark and literally every every now and then they get a phone call coming in their ear. they didn't even pause the game they just carried on playing something beeps in their <laughs> ear and then it's like oh how do you kill the boss at the end of perfect dark it's like oh yeah you can wear down his health and then wait till he goes to pray at the altar then you shoot the altar and lands on him and he dies oh, okay thanks a little bit later it's the same thing over and over again it's like, oh, that's just the most common question at the moment the guys weren't even pausing their game they're just like oh yeah you kill him this way <laughs> bye and they just sat there playing games the whole time like, oh. amazing <laughs> How yeah. about you, Dorbs? Did you? Line, eh? <laughs> yeah, I had a, a Game Boy. Um, had a classic, you know, Tetris, Mario Land. I also had Lemmings, which was dreadful because I mean, I had Lemmings, lemmings on the Amiga as well. But lemmings <laughs> on the Game Boy, you had like 10 Lemmings come down. It's just like, what's bloody pointless? Um, and I also had a little attachment where it was a magnifying glass and a light that went on the, on the actual screen and made the screen bigger. Yeah, I've um, got that in the loft. It absolutely bugger yeah. all to, to make it any brighter. Well, it just, it just, it just made pointless. made the screen reflective, and it was like yeah. this is and rubbish. It just, it just drained batteries as well. Just drained batteries in the in the torch thing, um, and it all came in a little carry case. I remember that's a little grey suitcase that I used to carry around and get the piss taken out of me. Do you remember the massive battery pack as well? The massive yeah. battery pack. Yeah. yeah. It was a beast. You'd carry around with you. Do you see the amount of attachments? There wasn't there like a speaker thing as well that went in? Went into yeah. the actual bottom of it. it. had two massive speakers on the bottom. Yeah. yeah. I, think AV, I, remember that. I think AVGN, AVGN did an episode about Game Boy peripherals and he, I think he ended up mounting I don't know, yeah, four the printer, or five yeah. to the Game Boy yeah, and yeah. it was just this huge thing like this in the end. And uh, yeah, the, he <laughs> mentions the printer in that. He takes a picture with the Game Boy camera, prints it on this <laughs> tiny little like dot matrix. Thing. Oh, it's cracking. Well, my Daryl at college had um, the camera and I remember him, this was in 99, so it must have come out around then, I, I guess, um, 99, 2000. And I remember him going, oh, let me get your picture and print it out on like a stick. I've probably still got the sticker somewhere. <laughs> it was like, you know, you couldn't use it for a photo ID anyway, put it that way. <laughs> um, cool, got um, your brother is here, Tim. Pete, remember Hello. Christmas? Hi, Pete. Hopefully we'll be able to catch up soon. Um, remember the Christmas we got the Mega Drive? Best Christmas day yeah. ever. Uh, oh, two, two top Christmases were either the Mega Drive or the PlayStation 1. Uh, I think both of those were, were surprised as well. Our parents did a good job of convincing us that we weren't getting them. And I was a bit, uh, a bit annoyed. I, was, oh, I really wanted to get it. Uh, and then you obviously we got surprised on the day to get... I think everyone's had that sort of moment. I mean, you get a console for Christmas. Yeah. 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 Mega Drive, get the Mega Drive and get the uh, PlayStation games. Me and my brother just shared it. So um, nice. I got like a new TV. He got the Mega Drive. And obviously, we needed them to, the two together. and got a few games and stuff. Got PlayStation. For me, in terms of handhelds, I um, I dived in with the Game Boy, which was, well, I mean, that was my main thing. I had a just the original DMG Game Boy. Um, most recently, in the last sort of five years, got a, a Pocket, just purely because of the screen being a little bit better. Um, one of my mates wanted to sort of downsize some of the stuff he had, so he gave me a really good deal on the Pocket. Um, but after that, I didn't get a handheld until the DS. Um, I just completely missed the Game Boy Color, which I was pretty gutted about. But um, And then by the time Game Boy Advance started coming out, I was just so in deep with, you know, the PS2 and um, still carrying on with the N64 that I kind of just didn't get back into handheld gaming until Nintendo DS. But um, the Game Boy has, has still got some of my favorite handheld games on it. Um, but one of them that really... And I, I still think this is an incredible looking Game Boy game. The two versions of Aladdin that came out, there's one on the Mega Drive and one on the Super Nintendo. And the Mega Drive one was far superior in terms of graphics, sound, and the fact that Aladdin had a sword. And then the, the Super Nintendo one, they did away with the sword, so we just threw apples. Um, <laughs> and then they, they brought it out on Game Boy, but it was a port of the Mega Drive version. 
So it had the Mega Drive styled graphics, the Mega Drive styled sounds, um, and Aladdin had a sword. And I thought, this is amazing. Uh, I, I still part like that. That's one of the best looking Game Boy games. Um, not the massive favorite of mine. Like Mario Land is great, and Wario Land is really, really good. But for me, the the best one on the handheld is is Mario Mario Land Two. It's so good. I still think this better, game is better than really Link's big. Awakening. It's my Probably favorite. Not. No, Probably not better than Link's Awakening. It's it's my favourite Mario game, game on the Game Boy for sure. Um and then probably my absolute favourite game on, on the original Game Boy is um Mega Man Two. Absolutely oh, yeah. difficult. It's so hard now, but even at the time it was difficult. But again, graphically and mu- the music on that for a Game Boy game is it's on another level. I think if there was a chip tune band who out there who just decided to just remake Mega Man 2 soundtrack as an album, it would be, it would be so so good. We've got a comment here from, I, I believe it's Nick, um, who's quite a keen contributor on our page, and I'm sure he's posted this on the page. I've got a portable N64 custom made, works great but slightly expensive. Um, I don't know if anyone saw that when he posted it, but it, it's a cool bit of kit. Um, Have to get him to repost it. It's yeah, uh, re- repost it, Nick. Um, so anyone watching, um, Nick will repost it. Um, what else have we got here? Nick again. Had a Game Boy with carry case, magnification with light, camera printer. It was nuts. <laughs> I had a mag- uh, magnifying glass eclipse on the front. It's, it's ridiculous. Really Absolutely pointless. ridiculous. It was pointless. It really was. And it worked very well. My, um, one, of, one of my mates had uh, a, a Game Gear, so we'd play game boy and nintendo stuff at my house he had a mega drive and a game gear and i always remember just being so jealous of of the game gear screen i mean you look at the original game gear screen now and it is a bit like you've got cataracts but at the time when you go around his for a sleepover and you'd be like playing game gear at night time it was like you could turn all the lights off and still play it and still see what you were doing whereas like i just that still as like a kid was like yeah that's cool yeah i remember the tv tuner the tv tuner for the game gear (laughs) <laughs> yeah, Neil's got one there. I've got one as well. Awesome. Awesome. Six batteries, though, doesn't it? Yeah, it's six. Like... I can always remember, remember playing Game Boy in the in a car in the back, trying to play a Game Boy, and it gets dark. Yeah. 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 Straight, and every time you go yeah. past the street, like, oh, I can see the screen a little bit. Yeah. My mate, um, my mate Trigger had a Game Gear, and I remember him having. Um, I think it was George Foreman boxing in between rounds. You sweet burgers to get your energy back up. <laughs> my memory of the game was playing that but just being blown away because it was colour and I had like a Game Boy and thing. Yeah. but the Game Boy games were better weren't they I, th- I think I think Game Boy games game were the Game Gear did have some absolutely stonking titles though like I remem- remember Streets of Rage being particularly good on the Game Gear um, both I think there's a couple of Sonics I think Sonic 1 Sonic 2 and I'm sure there's another one um, but all those were really good. It's basically if it was on Master System, it seemed to have a pretty good version of the Master System game on Game Gear. Um, but yeah, certainly Streets of Rage and Sonic games on Game Gear were pretty good. Well, it's my favourite part of the show and probably everyone <laughs> else's favourite part of the show. Um, the, the Miko and television update um, where we discuss what's happening in the world of Amico. Um this week. Tim, I don't know if you're aware of what the Amico and television is. Only from what you guys have discussed on the show, to be honest. So I'm not actually looked into okay. it. Have you, um, um, have you ordered one, Tim? you pre-ordered? <laughs> 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 oh, that's a shame. Um, yeah. um, what we like to do is, is to discuss what's going on and do we think it's going to be released in October um, and then we give our weekly percentage I think I'm on 0% at the moment of it being released in October and I'm going to stick to 0% and I'll, I'll tell you why um, watch the video on, on YouTube about um, a shortage of video game chips or some chip that the Amico requires um, and you know, this is going to have a knock-on effect. I think they need to go in production from July for an October release. Um, so we're, what, three months away? Um, so I'm, I'm going to stick to my 0% um, with it being released in October. Yeah, I think if there's if there's issues with the actual hardware, as in 
regardless of how many people they've got on a factory line building these things, if they literally do not have the parts to go in it, yeah, that is going to be a that's going to be a problem. Um, I know that the re- one of the reasons the PS5 is quite hard to get hold of is again there's a component chip or there's a part of it that, that isn't being made quick enough due to the pandemic. Um, and I know Nintendo have recently just come out and said they've got enough stock at the moment to kind of keep the switch going. But if the if this shortage of components keeps keeps coming, then they are going to be in trouble as well towards the end of the year, which is not when you want to have a shortage of consoles. Um, so I do, I do feel, um, I do feel a bit bad for for Intellivision if that's if that is the case. If they're struggling to get a hold of a chip, then that's you know that's a it's a bit of a sign of the time, unfortunately, which is which is which is bad for them because you know I think we we say it every week, regardless of how we how we feel about the actual system and what we've seen of it so far. You know, I still want it to I want it to come out and I want it to be good for the people that are going to enjoy it. Um, so it's going it's going to be a real bummer if. Um, you know, and there are some pretty, pretty diehard people out there ready to play this thing. And if it can't come out in October because there's a shortage of material because of the pandemic, then it's like, oh, I do feel a bit bad for them. But it does mean we get so, to lower the percentage. So, what what percentage are you going to go to now, Ollie? I can't remember what you said last time. I think I, I think I probably started the most positively when we started talking about it. I think I was at about sixty percent to start with. Um, I think I've come down slowly to about forty, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do a big drop now to twenty twenty percent chance of this thing coming out in October. Um, but I will say that I do feel that some of this now might not be their fault, but I do also think that there's 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 bigger problems with the production of this system than I think is, is being let on. Sorry, and um, Dorbs. I don't think it's ever going to come out. I just no, I, I, I just don't think it will come out. If it does, it won't be certainly not this year. Maybe next summer. I don't know. But I, I don't know. I know I had a chat with that Tommy, um, and he said he hopes to prove me wrong. And yeah, I hope he does. But I, I just can't see it coming out at all. If I'm honest, it's he's quite a showman, isn't he? He's the he's the kind of guy that you would want on your team because he's clearly passionate about his product and he's clearly passionate about um, bringing this thing to market and, and creating it for a very specific market. Um, so I can't, I can't ever knock his, his particular passion for it. Oh yeah. Yeah. He's very passionate, which is nice. But it's, I just, I don't know. I still, there's just something about the product, which just, I, I, just, I still don't feel like we know enough about what it does and, and how it works i know that there's there's now videos of people that have actually managed to get their hands on it and you can see it working um and from what from what you can see it's like okay cool but it works and the games look look pretty good if that's your thing so i think if it does come out it's going to tick a box for quite for quite a lot of people um i would quite like to know whether or not it's going to be able to to do other things because pretty much most most consoles now, regardless of um, the, the the main reason you buy it for is, is predominantly to play games. But pretty much every console now has got a YouTube app or um, yeah, a web browser on it, allowing you to do other things on it. And I do wonder whether or not you know the um, the Amico is going to allow you to do that. Is it going to have the option to you know watch YouTube on it? I mean, it should it should really be, allow you to do that at minimum. They, really, they could watch this on the Amico, couldn't they? They could. <laughs> yeah, they wouldn't be, be shy about that. That's the kind of thing, that's that's the isn't it? You think they'd be talking about that a lot more and promoting it? Well, yeah, I would. I would, I would hope so because of, I always bring it back to price point. You know, the, the closest, the closest console to that to the Amico in price point is a Nintendo Switch, and I know someone said you know, weeks and weeks ago now that you know, buck for buck, you get. 12 games or six games or whatever it is on the Amico and two controllers so you can like knock the price down I, I, that, that doesn't wash with me I'm afraid unfortunately it only comes with two controllers and it only comes with those six games if there's an option to take all six games off and a controller out and reduce the price by 75 quid cool then you've got an argument um, I think it would need to be a lot cheaper for, to get my interest I think like I say if you compare that price yeah. to a Switch then yeah, yeah there's no matter really to me Definitely. So, Dorbs, what um, percentage are you, are you going for? Well, you, you're negative. Yeah, he's negative. 
if I could go next, I, I'd zero I'd percent coming out at all. Okay, just, so you're you're the same as me now. Yeah. Thoughts. Yeah. Okay. I hope, um, I'm cool. I hope I am. Yeah, I hope it comes out. It's it's good to see you know new consoles. Um, Tim, I'm I putting the you on as well. The two hundred and fifty quid is a lot of money for it for what it what yeah. it looks like. Yeah. Really is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Ollie said, people are saying, "Oh, you get two controllers, you get six games." So if you take them out, it's, it probably costs like a hundred quid. It's like, well, yeah, but then if you buy a house for two hundred and fifty grand, if you take out the windows and the doors and the electrics, <laughs> and, you know, it doesn't cost you fifty grand, does it? It still costs you two hundred and fifty grand. So no, I think I just I think no, nah, not for me, not for me. We'll, we'll, we'll do all the predictions and I'll come back. So I'm, I'm very good at taking us on a tangent, and, I, and I've got a tangent. I. I We'll come back to price point. I've got a tangent for price okay. point. Well, Tim, I'm well, going to put you on the spot here. Sure. Well, I, don't, I don't know all the, the full ins and outs of the delays, but uh, I'll stick somewhere in the middle of your predictions and go 10%. Then. You've got a zero <laughs> and I'll get a nice, easy answer there. Okay. And Neil? Um, I think on the last video, I was quite hopeful for a, a last week in November, first week, December Christmas release for it. But like you, I've, I've seen the videos of. Um, the, the compound shortage, so I think I'm I'm pretty much down to a ten percent this year. Most likely next year going to be released. So, Blunners, nah, zero percent for me. Still not coming out. <laughs> it's just like my phone. I got like, it's like Samsung. They can't even make an update on my phone because they ain't got enough chips. They can't make the chips, so they've got no chance if Samsung can't even get hold of stuff thereafter. So it's, it's a zero for me. That's mental, mental. Okay, and I, well, and I, I said earlier, I do feel really bad for them if if, if this chip issue is causing, um, is going to cause them a major delay. I think it's going to be a good out as well, given that I, I still don't think, even with the chip shortages, I still don't think it was a high percent that it's going to come out in October. But you know, if that has genuinely affected their production line, then it sucks. And you wanted to say something about before we move on about price point. Oh yeah, just just a tangent on the price point. Um. You know, too I think it, it is, it is, I still think it is too much, um, given that things like a switch can go online and it can, you can watch, you know, my daughter watches Disney plus YouTube on it. She chats to her mates on it. Um, as well as playing games, it is, it is essentially a, a, an entertainment system itself. Um, but I think in turn, <laughs> you can, you can shoot me for this if you want to, but I think in terms of price point, I think the Evercade is better value for money. Um, I still don't think, the Evercade still not for me either, given the the sort of games that they keep bringing out. Um, but in terms of in terms of price point, um, being a system that you can have in your hand with two cartridges or one cartridge for like sixty quid, Brent. I mean that that is that's a better price. Point. <laughs> what was that? What was that? Neil? What was that? You were showing. Right. That was uh, yeah. Ever is that your Evercade coin? Oh, yeah. I couldn't give it away, could you? No, I couldn't. <laughs> he can't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I you really can't. I like my, uh, my Evercade. But uh, I think where the three, the three uh, was it, the RG351P came out not long after it. And, um, you know, you talk about price points. Like that was about the same price for a far better console. Yeah. And it was much better handheld. It's like, I've, I've still got my Evercade. I don't really use it because I just play the, the RG351P a lot. Yeah. I've got so Stuff on there, it's a really nice screen. You know, uh, you know, you guys have talked about the the two on this show quite a bit before, and there's just mm -hmm. no comparison. Whereas, like, if the three five one P was quite expensive, and you had to pay a lot more out for it, you could weigh up the pros and cons. But where they're the same sort of price, it's like well, you might as well go for one that's clearly far better. Um, yeah, but FK was okay. It was just uh, obviously. It's I, I have to admit, I I do get a bit of FOMO when I see people receiving the cartridges and the case and the instruction manual because it's quite a cool. Yeah. It's a really cool it's, idea. It's quite, I do like it. Licensed uh, gaming. Yeah. That's the main thing. It's it's a licensed game that appears in your hands and that's that's cool. You know, that that is it's cool. There's no there's no two ways about it. Um I, have to, I do hate the person that came up with the idea of putting the numbers on the cartridges. I think yeah. what you guys mentioned in one of your early videos. I, yeah. I've got to respect them for the idea, but imagine just having a shelf of like one, two, three, and six, you're like, I oh, you just got to buy the yeah. other ones. You do. That it's the it's horrible, yeah. that horrible yeah. feeling of like not having a collection, even if it's a card. Well, we're, we're um, keep everyone updated on, on the Amico over the um, coming episodes um, and we'll 
keep our percentage guesses um, and we'll see where they are um, on our next show. <laughs> Well, I want to thank Tim for joining us this evening. Um, okay. Been a pleasure. Been a really good guest. Um, I think it's been a really good show tonight. Um, thanks to the rest of the panel for being on. Um, and um, we've got a comment here before we go um, from our next guest, I believe, Hammonds. Um, price point just wipes off. I think I've missed this. Um, I think I paid less. Oh, I think this is about the Amico. I think I paid less than this. That my PS4 knew about four or five years ago. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah. Um, but as I say, it's been a really good um, broadcast. I hope people watching at home have enjoyed it. Don't forget, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and hit that bell. And until next time, we'll see you soon. Bye. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Cheers.